and welcome to Total Television. I'm Brian Dolby and today I'm talking to Oliver Johnson who is the CEO of Point Topic. Oliver, welcome to Total Television. We've never had the chance to talk to you before. Tell us a bit about what Point Topic does and its position in the industry. Sure. Uh, well, Point Topic was founded in 1998 um, with the idea of it focusing exclusively on broadband, which back in the 90s was, was something of a departure. But um, we started out looking at the international operators, the cases going on, the deployments in the leading countries. And um, for a few years, uh, that kept us busy. After a while, as broadband became a, a mass commercial deployment, we started looking in more detail at the geography and broadband in various countries. So we've done a lot of work in the UK, working with the ISPs and the incumbents and the regulators, just to get an idea of where broadband is going, where the demand for broadband is, and to an extent um, what the operators should do about maximising uh, the use of their capital expenditure to, to get the most customers. Yes, I know that you now produce, in fact, the global statistics that we all look forward to every quarter to see how the broadband phenomenon <laughs> is going, but we're really here to talk about Europe today and, and the drive to bring, I think it's 30 megs to everyone in Europe by 2020. Yes, um, the, the Commission issued a, what they call the Digital Agenda, this year and essentially what that's laid out is a, a pathway to achieving universal broadband for all the EU 27 uh, member states and uh, set some targets in terms of the speeds that they expect to be available, the number of people they expect to be subscribing and to an extent some indicators of how they're planning to help this be achieved. And so what are some of the, some of the major challenges? This, this can't be easy to do. Um, it's not easy. Um, it's not easy to achieve all the objectives. Some of the things that the EU has laid out, and it's, it's actually quite a sensible paper in terms of the numbers it's talking about. For example, it wants or expects 50% of European subscriptions to broadband to be running at 100 megabits or above by 2020. Um, now that's today to us sounds quite a high number. It's 10 years away. Um, if you think 10 years ago, the sort of broadband speeds you were, you were getting, you start to think of 100 megabits as not that far beyond the horizon. And indeed it isn't. We expect that um, this target will be achieved purely by commercial deployments. But there's no real necessity for central funding to be applied because most of these people will be living in, um, excuse me, most of these people will be living in dense urban environments. And that makes it very cost effective for operators to deploy fibre. They can get a good return on their expenditure because they don't have to dig very long uh, channels to lay this fibre. So from that point of view, that's a fairly reasonable objective. The problem is going to arise in the universality clause. What they're saying is we want the whole of European population to have 30 megabits available to them. Um, and that is more of a challenge, particularly in areas, some of the Eastern European states, Bulgaria and Romania, that don't have great uh, telephone infrastructure are going to need quite a lot of money to connect up their rural areas. There's something like 80% of uh, Romania, I believe, 80% of the rural population there has no access to broadband at all currently. So to get it out and available to them at 30 megabits is going to require quite a lot of money. Now, we keep hearing about uh, how cash-strapped Europe is, and that's a very good point. I mean, what is it going to cost? Well, there's ob obviously there's ongoing expenditure by the operators and the incumbents, and there are a number of central funding initiatives that are still working through the system. So, on top of that, we've done some relatively back-of-the-envelope calculations, but I estimate somewhere between 100 and 150 billion extra pounds will be needed um, to achieve something close to this sort of goal. But that will give benefits in, uh, in terms of the, uh, the national product, etc., and, and developing particular countries, making them attractive to investment. That's very true. Um, some research done on the previous or the first wave of broadband deployment in the UK, for example, indicated that GDP increased by about 2% due to the extra uh, business advantage that broadband brings. So if you translate that, and it's some people might say a stretch, but if you translate that across the whole of Europe over the next 10 years, you're talking about extra revenue around 200 billion in terms of increased tax base, but also increased productivity. It's crystal ball time now, Oliver. Can it be done? Absolutely, it can be done. Um, the funding should be in place. The returns on the investment are going to be adequate to cover the expenditure. 
And as long as they get the competitive environment right, there is no reason to believe this won't happen. Well, it sounds like we'll be talking to you again about this at some point in the future, but in the meantime, thanks for speaking to us today. Thank you.